Good quality audio, in my opinion, is the most important part of any video. You want your videos to be clear and concise, and that's something I've always strived for here on Maker's Muse, so that my videos come across as understandable as possible. Because if your audio isn't very good, it kind of ruins the whole experience. But the problem with decent audio gear is it's usually really, really expensive. So what I have in front of me are two microphones. This setup I normally use cost me around $500 Australian, and this one I just found at Kmart is 39 bucks. Is it any good? Let's find out. For those not in Australia, Anko is Kmart's own house brand. No, Kmart did not go bankrupt in Australia, unlike the US. And lately, they've been pushing out a whole range of interesting tech products, including a USB headset, headphones holder with wireless charger, and even a gaming keyboard with real mechanical switches, which Tay Keyboards reviewed here. They're all really cheap compared to anything else you can buy in a store, and they're even competitive to online purchases like AliExpress, with the added benefit of being able to return them, no questions asked, if it's junk. As you can probably expect, this is a rebrand, and as far as I can tell, I think it's a newer NW7000, with some packaging and branding changes, but I'll have to do some tests to find out for sure. In the box, you'll find some decent packaging, it's no frills but does the job. You have a tiny instruction manual, pop filter with gooseneck, foam wind sock, a super long 2.5 meter USB-A cable, shock mount, boom arm and a clamp to clamp the boom arm to your table, and finally, the microphone. So yeah, quite a lot of stuff for the money. First impressions, the microphone looks quite good. It looks like a typical condenser mic, but does feel quite light compared to my old AKG Perception 120. It also doesn't say condenser microphone anywhere on its packaging, with only it mentioned once on this page in the manual. So I really do wonder if it is. It's so cheap, I do have my doubts, but I guess we'll have to crack it open to find out. The fit and finish is quite nice. It does feel solid with no rattles or loose bits inside, but I'm definitely not a fan of the chrome mesh. There is, however, a finer mesh behind it, and presumably some foam inside as well. When it comes to the accessories, there's a surprising lack of cheap plastic here, which is refreshing. Almost everything's made out of metal. My usual setup is this Rode boom arm, which is clearly much more overbuilt, also much more expensive, but this light boom arm still holds its position quite well. The clamp appears to be cast aluminium and can be tightened down hard to the table, but the boom arm is only thin metal. It actually feels a bit like the arm from a lamp, so don't over tighten the clamp, secure it in place, or you'll just crush the thin metal tube. Pardon the pun, but the shock mount is shockingly good. It's rugged metal and should be able to clamp a range of microphones. So I usually use this shock mount from Ashton Microphones and it can accommodate very large diameter microphones, but as a result, it's massive. And when it's up in your face, it definitely gets in the way. So I tried shoving my super fat AKG mic into this smaller shock mount and I was surprised to see it actually does fit and it appears to perform just as well. However, it's a lot more compact. So I might actually steal this shock mount even if I don't decide to use the microphone. Finally, there's the pop filter which clamps onto the frame. The clamp is pretty fiddly and rubbish. I don't know why it's so long, but either way, it clamps in place and the gooseneck helps you move the pop filter over the microphone. And pop filters are good for stopping plosives like pa or ta. I usually use this metal mesh pop filter and it does pretty much the same job. They both seem to work fine. I always get a bit wary when no-name products require a USB connection, but on plugging it in, Windows 10 did recognize the microphone straight away as an LCS USB audio and had the generic USB audio 2.0 drivers sorted in just a couple of seconds. There really was no fuss at all. So what does this incredibly cheap microphone sound like? Well, you've been listening to it the whole time. Yeah, this thing has blown me away. Now, look, the noise floor might be a bit higher than the condenser mic I normally use, but with noise reduction, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I do a few tricks in Premiere Pro to bring my audio up a bit. I'll do a, uh, a gain and a hard limiter so it's not going to clip, and I'll usually do some noise reduction and maybe a little bit of EQing because this room tends to have a bit of a bass boom issue, which I intend to fix in future, but for audio recording in your voiceovers or doing streams, this is more than good enough. I don't know how, but it is. Now, this is what I mean about the pop filter. It gets in the way. I generally don't run with a pop filter, 
but considering it comes with one and it works so well, that's pretty cool too. But how does this compare to my regular condenser microphone, the AKG Perception 120? This is the microphone I've been using for voiceovers on the channel for like the past six years or so. It's the Perception 120 from AKG. It's since been discontinued and replaced with updated models and such. But basically it's got a XLR output that goes into a Steinberg UR22 because this microphone needs phantom power, it needs 48 volts, which the external audio interface provides. And I use that audio interface to change the gain. There's no controls for gain on the microphone itself. And it has, it's what's known as a true condenser. It has a two third inch size diaphragm. And that's what, uh, that's what reproduces the sound and feeds the audio signal into the computer through the audio interface. The microphone itself was around $200 Australian. It's a sort of entry level professional condenser microphone, but because it's XLR out, you need the audio interface. Then I needed to buy the pop filter, the, uh, the shock mount and the boom arm. So it was around 500 Australian dollars for the whole setup, which is a lot more money than the uh, $35 or so for this entire thing. So the audio quality may be a little bit better, but is it that much better? I'll let you be the judge. And then finally, the option most people will have on hand is just a headset. Now this headset wasn't too expensive. It was about $100 Australian. It's a Logitech G332. Headsets get a lot more expensive than that. But the audio, as you'd expect, is very dry. It's very lifeless, but it's still fairly understandable. You could get away with using a headset for a voiceover. It just doesn't have much life. It's not something I would want to listen to for 20 minutes trying to figure out something in a tutorial. And also considering the price, a hundred bucks for a headset like this, is still a lot more than the price I paid for this whole setup, which is ridiculous, but that's where we are today. But we just have to know what's actually inside this cheap microphone. Opening it up is surprisingly easy. You just unscrew the threaded base, which is actually pretty well machined. And the metal tube comes away, revealing the circuit board labeled LCS USB 921, if that means anything to anyone. But um, yeah, I'm not really seeing any large capacitors or evidence of any sort of phantom power supply. In fact, it appears that a large portion of this board is unpopulated. Undoing these two screws reveals an absolutely tiny capsule indeed. This is in fact an electret. It's a kind of condenser microphone, but it doesn't require phantom power at all. And quite frankly, to call this microphone a condenser microphone is very, very sneaky indeed. In fact, it looks like all the heavy lifting is being done by this specialty USB headset line in controller I see that's actually pretty fascinating and I might do some more research into it in future. And there you have it, the $39 Australian microphone combo from Kmart. Again, the rebrand of the NW7000 from Newer is surprisingly usable. It's a fraction of the price to the gear I normally use, but the audio quality is more than good enough for YouTube, especially if you run it through some noise reduction and a little bit of condensing. It's not a proper condenser capsule with phantom power. It's a electret, which is a little bit misleading, but again, the Kmart packaging didn't explicitly say Studio Condenser, uh, but the newer packaging does. So just keep that in mind, it is an electorate, but the audio quality is more than good enough for recording voiceovers, tutorials, streams, or podcasts if you're on a tight budget. And full disclosure, I just saw this in Kmart. I was there for completely unrelated reasons, and I decided to pick it up with my own money and absolutely rip it apart and see if it's any good, because I was expecting it to be complete rubbish, but it's, not complete rubbish, which is really cool to see. So links in the video description below. And if you found this video interesting or useful here on Makers Muse, maybe consider subscribing. It's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.